because as you know Rahul Gandhi has formally assumed the responsibility of leader of opposition of the Lok Sabha it is his first constitutional post and Rahul Gandhi is following in a hoary tradition of the big Gandhi names ascending constitutional posts without a shred of experience to their name much like his mother Sonia Gandhi Rahul Gandhi has sworn in to stake claim to the post which among many other things entitles him to state the opposition's case in the house it's a massive responsibility the operative word essentially is entitled rahul's greatest qualification some claim especially his opponents is his surname that has allowed him to leapfrog over other more experienced and perhaps accomplished claimants now as lop or leader of the opposition he will be in the enviable position of deciding on some of the most consequential aspects of how our nation is run viewers he will be the chairman of the public accounts committee he can scrutinize cag reports can order probes into cag findings nd mp's form majority of the panel therefore there is the possibility of conflict he will be part of collegiums to pick the chief of the cbi lokpal cvc cec election commissioners and the cic very important viewers these positions are as you know rahul can take over if government resigns or is defeated on the floor of the house he will have a decisive say on the smooth functioning of the house the lop post puts rahul at the head of putative opposition led coalitions a key role he will have in the allotment of seats and rooms in the house as pointed out already apart from the lack of experience rahul also has a checkered record as a committed parliamentarian rahul's attendance average is 51% viewers the national average is 79% and i'm just talking about the last lok sabha the number of debates rahul's average around 8 national average is at 47 number of questions rahul's average is 99 national average is almost twice that number 210 private members bills rahul's average zero national average one and a half viewers there are several other parameters that we can look at but i don't want to hog this conversation i want to open this up and with us a senior congress leader salman kurshid former member of the union cabinet of the upa and also with us amit malviya in charge of the communication cell the it cell of the bharatiya janata party so two experienced in gentlemen here to debate with us this evening let me first begin with uh, mr kurshid mr kurshid are the question marks over rahul gandhi's suitability justified according to you i i think really really it's a uh, uh, it's a futile futile thing to say what has been said uh, some of which you you sort of flagged and a futile thing to reply the man has shown his merit uh, he has done what nobody has ever done uh, even mr chandrashekhar had not in his yatra done anything like what mr rahul gandhi has done he has proved his point he's campaigned hard he's brought the party to where we are so that we can actually elect a leader of opposition for lok sabha now let us see what happens in times to come history will judge all of us and history will judge him too but to sit there and uh, and carp about you know he doesn't have this he doesn't have that is a futile exercise the world now knows what mr rahul gandhi stands for and they do know that he is he is a man of his word they know that he is prepared to go the extra mile he's done it now let's leave it leave it to him to perform as the leader of opposition uh, but the questions yes are being raised by opponents but they were first raised by members of the congress party if you remember mr kurshid about his suitability the g23 or corpus of leaders expressed their let me just say politely their reservations about the fact that rahul's surname or the gandhi's surname still held sway over the party which was perhaps 
uh, preventing it from growing. Let's not forget that, yes, Rahul Gandhi has doubled the numbers, but the Congress hasn't come back into power. I suppose that really is the end purpose, isn't it? Well, I mean, you can always cavil about, cavil about, you should have got 300, you've got, you've got only 100, etc. But that's democracy. That's democracy. And you're quoting people or you're relying on people who have vanished without a trace. Vanished without a trace. Some of them have fallen in line to say that, look, we are essentially loyal to the party and we believe in the party ethos and the party ideology and they're back in the party. Others have just disappeared completely. Now, why are we spending time on somebody like okay. that? L L Rahul Gandhi has proved himself. Rahul Gandhi is, is the man of the moment, despite the fact that Mr. Mr. Modi has become prime minister again. But Mr. Modi hasn't become prime minister of, this, of the party in majority. He, is, he belongs to the single largest party, and then he's relying on his okay. allies to be the prime minister. Okay. So, so, so be it. Okay. I, I can't go on criticizing him for I, being a prime minister without support, etc. He's prime minister. Let that be. He's leader of opposition. Let that be. Now, let's see how we perform in parliament. Okay. Well, let me bring in Mr. Malvia. Is it an incidental question? Is it a waste of time? Well, of course, it isn't. And uh, the country must debate on Rahul Gandhi as the leader of opposition. First of all, the Prime Minister is a third-term Prime Minister. He has won two mandates on his own, and the NDA has a simple majority in the House for the third time. Compare it to Rahul Gandhi, since Mr. Khurshid spoke about his achievements, and I was trying very hard to locate some of them. What has he achieved for his party? Before 2014, the Congress had never gone below 100-seat mark. After 2014, it hasn't even touched the 100-seat mark. If his yatra was so significant as the Congress leader just spoke, why has the Congress party not been able to win even a single seat in large states like Madhya Pradesh, in Andhra Pradesh, in Odisha, in Delhi, and several other states where they've drawn a blank? Lastly, the vote percentage that the Congress has seen increase in this election is a mere 1.7%. After doing all of this that the Congress would like to credit Rahul Gandhi for, there's not much to show in terms of achievement. And in the states where they've done well, it is largely because of the allies. The Uttar Pradesh and Tamil Nadu are case in point where the DMK and the Samajwadi Party have actually powered the Congress's performance. Even in Maharashtra, where they seem to have got a decent number of seats, it's nowhere close to their uh, performance in earlier years. So I'm not quite sure if Rahul Gandhi can be credited with uh, whatever the Congress believes he should be credited with. The fact is that he's failed for the third time in a row to dislodge Prime Minister Modi. Mr. Modi is the uh, incumbent Prime Minister and Rahul Gandhi, by now uh, being catapulted to the position of leader of opposition uh, in the West Minister system, may uh, think of himself as the Prime Minister in mate, waiting, but it could be a very, very long wait for him there. The other important aspects that you would ascribe to somebody occupying this important post is uh, the ability to build consensus, is to take the opposition parties along. Let's look at the events of the last two days. Uh, there was no consensus amongst the indie bloc on whether they should have a contest for the speaker's post. Rahul Gandhi has essentially started his first day as leader of opposition on a losing note. Similarly, uh, there was no consensus on whether there should be a voice vote or the opposition should ask for division. Now, these decisions should have been taken by the leader of opposition in consultation with senior leaders of other parties, but that was not the case. So much so that the opposition parties did not even know that Mother Sonia Gandhi has appointed son Rahul Gandhi as the leader of opposition. Now, let's accept that the Congress is a family-run party. Everyone else 
uh, is basically running around the Gandhi family. Right. And frankly, in uh, not just politics, but in any other sphere, if you had somebody who had failed as many times as Rahul Gandhi has failed, do you think he would really get uh, a shot at the top job like okay. he has got, let, let, at let's, least as far as the opposition is concerned? The answer is no. Okay, let's, let's confine ourselves to the first aspect of this. Pavan Varma also joins this panel. There are just the three of us speaking here. Mr. Pavan Varma needs no introduction. Former member of parliament with the JDU, then left to uphold in his own words, the principles of secular democracy. So, I'm just asking you, you are a person who understands politics, a student of politics. Now, the LOP in the Westminster model is picked through a rigorous intra-party process which is predicated on the principle of elimination. I don't see Rahul Gandhi having gone through such a rigorous inquiry of his abilities. Mr. Varma, and we are talking about an individual who could potentially be seen as um, the, the leader of the opposition, the shadow prime minister of this country. Uh, thank you, Rahul. You're, I think you're right. But that would apply equally to the BJP. Uh, this rigorous uh, pro process of selection I don't believe was followed, nor could it be followed, under the overweening personality cult that Mr. Modi has assiduously built for himself. And in, as far as the Congress is concerned, it is no secret that it is dominated by a family. And even the president of the party, Mr. Kharge, an otherwise competent politician, has to defer to the family. But here is the important question. This particular session of parliament is a challenge not only for Mr. Rahul Gandhi because this is the first time he's accepted a position of responsibility apart from a brief tenure as the president of the party. He has never been a minister when he could have been and shown his capabilities. Right now he holds no post in the Congress organization. He has, could have been the leader of the opposition, but for some inexplicable <laughs> reason, he had Mr. Adhiranjan Chaudhary there. So this is the first time he has accepted a leadership position, and he must prove his mettle. Leader of the opposition has to do a lot of work in interrogating the government, apart from rhetoric. <coughs> There is a great deal of preparation and substance and also felicity in the language where both in English and Hindi he can express himself in a manner that is compelling. So I think Mr. Rahul Gandhi is on test. But what is on test also is Prime Minister Modi. He has no experience of running a coalition government. He has been the supreme leader unquestioned in his tenure for over a decade in Gujarat and now in, as Prime Minister for another decade. He has never had a situation where he needs to consult or build a consensus, leave alone within his own party, but now with the opposition, which is in much greater strength. So Mr. Modi is equally, Prime Minister Modi is equally on test. Does he have, by temperament and instinct, the making of a consensus leader? And can okay. he, well, therefore, now in a weakened position, run a, a, a government which can finally focus on what the people want, which is good governance? People are tired of the acrimony between the BJP and the Congress and a stalled parliament. Well, I mean, that is, so unfortunately, whether we like it or not, acrimony between the Treasury benches and the opposition benches has been a standard of Indian politics because that's really the essence of democracy. We can't expect everyone to sort of become part of one consensus, overarching consensus, because that also means that you close no, but ranks. but there is also that's the worrying. demands but, of good but governance. Yes, that is true. Uh, we are, of course, you know, you're coming from a position in the opposition, so obviously you're going to be overarchingly critical of every decision, perhaps, that the government has taken. 
uh, and disregard perhaps the good stuff that the government has done. I am not coming and, from anywhere. Okay, you're I not coming from anywhere. Let, let me just, let me just talk about this consensus issue. Uh, you know, at one level, Mr. Kurshid and Mr. Malviya, at one level, we credit the Prime Minister for being an exceptional, exceptional political gymnast. We have always said that Mr. Modi is perhaps the most felicitous politician. And yet we think that he will not be able to balance the different contradictions that coalition politics demands. His BJP has been part of several coalition experiments at the state level and in a party that does respond to Mr. Modi singularly, it is to be assumed that a lot of decisions at the state level in these coalitions would have passed his desk and would have been signed off by him. So, Mr. Kushid, are we over at some level or the other emphasizing uh, this whole business that Mr. Modi is a tyro when it comes to sort of the give and take of politics. Well, I didn't. I don't know why. Why are we going into this at all? Uh, we, Mr. Modi, is what Mr. Modi is. We all know what he is. Uh, what Mr. Modi will be, will be in the circumstances in which he finds himself now, will become apparent. So why should we sit here and speculate and okay, why should so, we so assume then let me ask and why you, should Mr. we Kursi, imagine? On the question uh, of just, consensus. Let's, let's just wait and see what he can do. Fair enough. On the question of consensus. Now, as far as... Cons yeah, just one second. Rahul yeah, Gandhi know. has as been nurtured in a system. No, Rahul Gandhi has been nurtured in a system, sir, if I may, that doesn't really question him. That is where the sense of entitlement comes from, according to some people, according to his bitterest critics, some of whom were in the Congress party, maybe today silent. But a person who is used to having his way, can he actually perform when someone actually says, no, you well, can't have your way on this or that? Well, listen, I understand. I understand and I should answer, answer that. I, I think you should... You should really talk to Mr. Gandhi. Uh, what we know, what we know of what he has put up with, uh, is perhaps not known to the world. Congress party needed transformation in many forms, in many ways, and he was he was bent upon that transformation, and he had to struggle for it. Despite whatever you think he might be, he had to struggle for that transformation. He may well have thought that he is not being able to do it as quickly and as fast as he wants to. He is very ambitious about a changed party and a, and a transformed party. But I think if anybody wants to study his ability, his ability to reach out and ability to persuade and ability to use whatever charm or whatever charisma he has okay. to ensure that we move in a particular direction, they need, to study, they need to study the time that he has spent as a leader in, a, in more ways than one. Please get into that into a little deeper detail if you're interested in predicting what Mr. Rahul Gandhi will be able sure. to do. I, I take we, your, know, we know and we are comfortable with what we believe him to be. I, I take your suggestion. Uh, let me bring in Mr. Malviya. Mr. Malviya, we've come around to the question now of who is better suited temperamentally to build consensus, which is at the heart, really, of ensuring that Parliament delivers for all of us. Otherwise, we go back to the 2009 Parliament where paralysis really took hold and nothing really moved legislatively. At least that's the claim. Mr. Malvia, is it Mr. Modi? Can he do it? Can he work with Rahul Gandhi? Look, uh, Rahul, your namesake, Rahul Gandhi, is a Nepo kid. You know, he's the child of nepotism. He has inherited the business of politics from his family. And therefore, I'm not quite sure if he even understands what is consensus. And I'm not going to make uh, these rhetorical statements. I'll substantiate it. Just look at the way the Indie Bloc coalition was managed. You had uh, leaders like Nitish Kumar walking out of the alliance because they re felt that they were not treated well. Even Mamta Banerjee at some point in time had distanced herself from the alliance. You look at the events of the last two days and I spoke about it in my opening comment. Clearly Rahul Gandhi 
has uh, failed to even take them on board, let alone bringing a consensus. Now, let's come to Prime Minister Modi. We are talking about a man who's been in a public office for almost uh, two decades and counting. First as Chief Minister and then as Prime Minister for two terms. He's somebody who was questioned on his foreign policy when he was the Chief Minister of Gujarat and running for the Prime Minister's office. And we have all seen how in the last 10 years he's come to redefine India's foreign policy. Now, if you do not understand uh, the politics of Prime Minister Modi, the kind of pragmatism that he brings to the table, and his long organizational experience in which he has managed several coalition partners across various states he's managed, right. then I'm uh, sure uh, we are deluding ourselves. And let's stop this comparison between Prime Minister Modi and Rahul Gandhi. There is no comparison. Prime Minister Modi is a self-made man. He's risen from the ranks to the top office of this country, he has won successive mandates both in the state and at the center on his own steam and credibility. Rahul Gandhi, on the other hand, despite having inherited a powerful legacy, is struggling to keep his party afloat. Okay. Now, it is clearly the Congress's prerogative if they want to hang out with the man who's sinking them. But it can't be India's uh, priority too. Okay. And we have to make that distinction. And the last two days will bear me out okay. that Mr. Well. Modi has held the NDA flock together and Rahul Gandhi has failed. Okay, interesting times ahead, viewers. Interesting times ahead. We will have to see how these two gentlemen get on with the job of forging consensus and making parliament work. This is an important point of inflection, viewers, in our democratic history. I move on to the next debate. Thank you, gentlemen, for uh, joining us and sharing your perspectives. Let's move on, viewers, to Tamil Nadu.